how much do you know uh, in the same way that you know about the United States? How much do you know about the Russian side? Maybe the Chinese side, uh, India and Pakistan, that all, all, all of this, like what, how their thinking differs perhaps. Yes, well, for that, you, you wanna to go to the experts, right? So in, for Russia, for example, um, there's a guy called Pavel Podvig, who is probably the West's top expert on Russian nuclear forces. He works in parallel with the UN. He also studied in Moscow. And he interviewed, so my information comes from him, right? Like you do all the footwork to know what questions to ask, and then you take the very specific questions to him. And I learned from him about how the Russian command and control goes down. And it's very similar to ours because America and Russia have been at sort of nuclear dueling with one another mm -hmm. um, for 75 years now. And so everything we have, they have, right? With the exception of we have a great satellite system and they have a super flawed one. Theirs is called Tundra. And even um, Pavel Podvig admitted that there are serious flaws in Tundra. Uh, the Russian satellite system, for example, can mistake sunlight for flames, can mistake clouds for a nuclear launch. This is a fact, okay? <laughs> and, um, you know, what was interesting in interviewing him was also this recent very, very dangerous shift in nuclear Russian nuclear policy, which is this. Many Russian experts will tell you that Russia has always maintained that it never had a launch on warning policy. Now, I don't know if I believe that's true, but I'm just telling you what they say. And this is coming from the generals, the Cold War generals in Soviet Russia saying, oh, no, 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 we would wait. They were kind of playing the noble warrior. We would wait to absorb a nuclear attack until we launched, okay? So many Americans, you know, experts will tell you that that's just posturing and propaganda. Mm -hmm. But that was their official position. And that changed just two years ago when Putin gave a speech and he said that their position had changed, that they will no longer wait to absorb an attack, that they, once they learn of, how did he phrase it? He called it like the the, the trajectory of the missiles, right? Which is a way of, of sort of talking about parody, the same way we see the missile coming over in mid-course. Putin made that same statement and said we would launch. What do you know of the way Putin thinks about nuclear weapons and nuclear war? Is it just something to allude to in a speech? Or do you think he contemplates the possibilities of nuclear war? I don't know, but if I had to guess, it would go like this. I would look at his background, and he comes from the intelligence world, right? So my experience in interviewing old timers who have spent decades working for the CIA or even NRO or NSA, I know the way they think from having spent hundreds of hours interviewing them, right? And then I know the way that you know, military men think, and it's very different, right? So Putin's not a military person per se. He's an intelligence officer. So what con would concern me there, if I had to guess about his mindset, has to do with paranoia, right? Most intelligence officers must have a degree of healthy paranoia or they're going to wind up dead, right? Right? And so that's not a great quality to have. You would be more trigger happy, perhaps. Uh, so you're more, you would be more prone to respond to erroneous signals. And and you'd be suspicious. And you can see that now. There's a, such a, you know, incredible distrust and, and, and sort of real conflict between Russia, between its leader, and NATO, between its leader and all of the West. And then that is fueled by his closest advisors. Um, kind of, you know, seem they seem to be, from the statements they have made that I've read in translation, they seem to be fostering that same idea that, you know, NATO really has it in for Russia. The, America really has it in. And that is so dangerous and disheartening. And perhaps makes it less likely that the president would pick up the phone and talk to the other president. And or that 
the close advisors near the president would make that happen. 